Hi there, welcome to another Rahalastapa. This week's guest is Joel Domit. He's a horny little devil, but he gets his comeuppance for that. He's a lovely guy. Um, hey, look, we're doing plenty of these shows on the road. Go to richhang.com slash gigs, richhang.com slash rahalastapata slash tour. Uh, you can see all the places we're coming to. Uh, we're going to be in Salford with Sarah Millican and Jimmy Cricket on the 25th of May. Then we're in Wakefield on the 2nd of June. We've got two London gigs uh, at King's Place, not at the Leicester Square Theatre, King's Place, King's Cross. Uh, I am aiming for some big star guests on that one, and I do have one penciled in for the 17th. He doesn't want to say he's definitely doing it in case he has to pull out again. So it's be worth booking for that. Uh, Warwick Art Centre on the 28th of June. Uh, Henley Festival on the 14th of July with Barry Cryer and a new date in Canterbury on the 17th. Then it goes on into the autumn. I'm also at the Edinburgh Festival <coughs> at the Newtown Theatre from the 2nd of the 25th of August. Not Mondays. Those will be audio only, those podcasts in Edinburgh, but they will go out daily in Edinburgh on the Acast feed. So do check those out. RichardHerring.com slash gigs please come and see us live if you can it would be lovely to see you new gate dates are being added all the time and there's plenty more to come in 2020 as well anyway let's sit back relax and enjoy rahala stapa with joel wankin dom <laughs> as he's called because unusually he likes wanking unlike most people who don't i don't like it at all i've been doing it during this I mean, you wouldn't know. Nothing comes out of the end anymore. I'm shooting dust. I'm 51 years old. Look at my old man face. I mean, you wouldn't know, would you? Come on. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Leicester Square Theatre. Please welcome a man who has committed many crimes, but the police will never catch him. It's Richard Herring. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hello. Oh, you're much better than last week's audience. So it's welcome to the show. <laughs> welcome. Welcome to uh, the the uh, the show. This podcast it is called, as you'll know, uh, Richard Herring's Large Size Telescope Podcast. It's just a podcast. There's now we changed the brief of it. It's just going to be about telescopes, but large large size ones. We're not interested in little telescopes. I don't have to tell you <laughs> what size those are going to be. Uh, though I was talking to some Klingon speaking Star Trek fans. Uh, and they said, Nuktak o push pai! Which means, where's the bathroom? When they came back from the bathroom, uh, they said, <laughs> they all needed a wee. Uh, they call it Rahulistabas. I don't know. Like, oh, that's going to catch on. So we're going to meet some of our uh, audience. We've got a, a chippy, beardy man in the front row. Uh, so who works in IT? What's your name, sir? Oh, my name's David Frew. Your name's David Frew? <laughs> oh, you're, you're the man who's. I know who you are. This is a man. <laughs> This is a man who has to pretend to be David Frew this week because David Frew, the nuclear physicist, couldn't use his tickets. And so, it, this is, you look a little different than I remember. Is the beard, is the beard a new thing? Um, what do you, I would leave, uh, let's, pretend, let's pretend you have an alternate character. What's your actual name? Twan. Twan, it is Twan. Is that your actual name? What's the, what's the name that it's shortened from? Antoine. Oh, Antoine. I've, you know, I've never questioned that. I've, I've communicated with you quite a lot in, over the years. Uh, and I've never worked that out. What do you do for a living working in IT? Uh, in work. uh, yes. Yes, you work in IT. <laughs> is, this your, is this your guest here this evening? Yes. Wow. This is <laughs> how did, well, how has this happened? How is this? How do you know a woman? <laughs> what relation is this lady to you? She's just a friend. She's just a friend. That's, that's, it's, that's how it's going to stay, isn't it? Yeah, it's... it's <laughs> He's got your front row tickets. Look, at he's got a lovely beard. <laughs> What's your name? Sophie. Sophie, what do you do for a living, Sophie? I've just been fired. You've just been fired? <laughs> Me too. 
What were you doing before you got fired? You work in the radio, so I just got fired from writing a TV script. You and me are very similar, and so things that you've fallen on such hard times. <laughs> you're still a very beautiful woman. You don't have to hang around with this guy, so it's, it's fine. <laughs> However low your self-esteem is today, you're, you're better than that. You're better than him. No offence. It's just... It's just reality. <laughs> Lovely to see you. Thank you for coming along to the show. I hope... I hope, things, I hope things, Why did you get fired? Were you bad? Did you do something wrong? Um, I just wasn't very good. You weren't very good? <laughs> you have to be really bad to get fired from the media. So it's a mess. <laughs> it's a very, good luck in finding it. Are you looking for a new job in radio? No. What are you going to... What, what, whatever are you going to move into? Freelance. Freelance. I mean, that isn't a job, though. Just be free. <laughs> I was, oh, well, I'm sorry to hear. I got, I got. I know how much it hurts because I got. I was doing a writing job and I got basically sacked. They told me I was really great, but they didn't want anything that I'd written. Uh, so, <laughs> if I'd been there, I'd just said, "Yeah, it's great. We're just going to get the other guys to have a look at it, and then not." I wouldn't have told me that I was bad. I would just let me find out when they turned on the telly to watch my episode. Uh, so that's what I'd have done. It's a cruel business. It's a cruel business. You'll be fine. I'm telling you, you're going to be fine. Stick with Twan. <laughs> I just find it so unlikely that you two have even ever met. That is, that is what that's. Um, but it's, it's great. It's great that you're friendly. Uh, so um, we're <laughs> going to move on to another weird man now. Uh, it's, uh, he's probably best. My next guest, this guy, sorry, my only guest. <laughs> nearly, nearly gave it away. Sorry, right, we covered it. We covered it. He's probably best, and the reason you're here tonight is to see him because he's best known for being on Celebrity Lego Masters at Christmas. <laughs> Not the rest of the year. No idea why that is. Will you please welcome Joel Domit, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Celebrity Lego Master. Come in. Sit down. That's your, that's your pen. I, I took thank your you, pen. I thank you I don't want to walk much. away with your pen. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for having me. It's lovely to have you here. What was Celebrity Lego Masters? I missed that. It was on at Christmas. Yeah, I got that from the title. It was it's on at it, Christmas. It was, all in the, it was all in the title. And uh, you got given a child just for the episode. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not for the whole life. Was it and Christmas 1975? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> As they say, a child is not just for Christmas. <laughs> and, um, and then you got given a child and you have to make Lego. And um, basically, you, the child is good at Lego. That's okay. the idea. And then you get, they get celebrities in to <laughs> fuck it up. Okay. And, but that's a really bad idea because the kids take it really seriously. <laughs> and then you get Joe Swash just going, <laughs> and the kid's like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> this is my life. <laughs> I'm trying to win this fucking show, Joe! <laughs> and so it's, uh, it's quite a weird show to be on, really. It's okay. just sort of angry kids and, um, <laughs> and celebrities enjoying themselves way too much. <laughs> and, uh, Did you win? It's, uh, no, I think we came second. Oh, I story think, of your life. It's, sorry. <laughs> That was amazing. <laughs> was so, uh, I don't know whether you guys know, but I was in a show called I'm a Celebrity. Give me a... Yes, well, let's quit. That's quite, that was uh, quite a bold decision to go on I'm a Celebrity, wasn't it? Because, yeah. A, you weren't really one. And B... <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just, like, that's the fact. I, I, I went on I'm a Celebrity, get me out of here. It wasn't until like, they got me out of there that I became a celebrity. <laughs> yeah. It was a very odd show to be... Yeah, <laughs> it, it was it was bold for a, for a, an up and coming. I don't think yeah. any up and coming comedians had. No, but that's what I really meant. It's a it's a yeah. it's a gamble to take because you know it's a massive exposure. Yeah, uh, and uh, and you know it can go wrong, can't it? If you Absolutely. turn out to be secretly racist, that's could be yeah. the end of your. <laughs> yes. If you don't know, you go. Maybe I'm secretly racist. I don't think I am, but once you're in the jungle, <laughs> it comes out. They should call the show. Are you secretly racist? <laughs> yeah. And it just, it's just like, because you don't, honestly, you kind of don't know what's going to happen because you're just so hungry. And so everyone is sat there going, I, I mean, am I secretly racist? <laughs> and, and you get really hungry. You're like scared. That, um, luckily, I wasn't, which is great news for everyone. <laughs> and I, um, and yeah, so I, it, well, it was a gamble because I was kind of at that point where I was like, people were starting to sort of recognise my Edinburgh shows as being like, 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 okay and fun and like, so I was getting like a really nice return customer from that and I was like starting to get on stuff and I felt like I was at the start of 
the, I was the start of the bigger ladder, you know? And so this show was either going to make me jump to the top of a bigger ladder or fuck the ladder. Yeah. And um, <laughs> so I... Uh, but I kind of decided to, to do it, and it kind of turned out all right. Yeah, um, very much so. It's mainly because I kind of... We realised that it's... It was basically, I think, the only big show like that where you can you're allowed to be a comedian on it and i think there's a lot of comedians that it wouldn't work for and uh the, you know the secretly racist ones but like <laughs> it's um but like for, for me i'm quite upbeat and nice and so yeah, and because there's no narrator on the show there's you just i would go into that bush telegraph and i'd sit there for hours uh, hours right. and just talk to the person and i try to make up jokes every day i try to like write jokes for them and just talk to them and i didn't show any of it but it's like it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> and they just showed me to be secretly racist. It's really frustrating. But I, um, yeah, and so they just, uh, you know, you could just talk. I, just, I just tried to narrate the show. Right. And I didn't, I, didn't I, I was sort of like, why am I still in this? I can't believe I'm still in this. And then I, I saw one of the other contestants getting interviewed. They try and split you up. But then I saw one of them being interviewed and they were just like, oh, so how do you think the trial's going to go? And they were like, yeah, it's going to be all right. <laughs> and you're like, oh, I'm doing well because I give a funny answer. <laughs> yeah. And then that's, yeah. And then, but it's better that you come second, similarly with Emily, I think, because then you haven't got that thing of like, king of the jungle or whatever. It's like you haven't got that hanging over your head. You can just kind of, it's like, yeah, I, th I think it's hopefully I've tried to transcend it a little bit. Yeah. Transcend. What's well, it, but it's all, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> I mean, I feel I've transcended it by not being on it. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> totally, totally, absolutely. But it's but it sends you down. I mean, it is it's a it's a difficult thing to negotiate because you are obviously a stand up comedian. And you're still doing stand up. Yeah. But it, it sends you into kind of different celebrity world. Yeah. Where a your you know your your life private life becomes a matter of tabloid interest, uh, but also you're in a, a different sort of branch of entertainment as well. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's, it's that reality TV thing. But it's interesting because that's the only real way to get... As a young comedian, that's the only way to get yourself onto to TV in any... Well, I think I, I kind of opened a new path, you know, because uh, when it's like... I'm sure it was different from you when you were sort of... You, you were the younger comedian. That sounded bad, but, like, you know... I was once. Like, I was young once. It's like, um, <laughs> but, like, you know, there's, there's a certain part... When I was sort of... Uh, starting out, there was basically one path, and that path was you do McIntyre's Roadshow, Alive at the Apollo, Mock the Week, Mock the Week, Mock the Week, Mock the Week. You just keep doing Mock the Week until you sell out a tour, and then that that basically was kind of the the way. Yeah. And um, and that would I was kind of it was starting to get a bit burnt, and I, I wasn't on that Mock the Week sort of roster, and so I was and I was you know I was getting on a few bits and bobs, so I was just kind of. I actually went to, uh, I did my Melbourne Comedy Festival and I saw a comedian called Joel Creasy and he was in the show and he then, uh, in I'm Sorry Get Me Out of Here, in the Australian one, and he then hosted the extra show afterwards, uh, the year after, and I saw did, a show. Did they send the Australians to the UK? It's, yeah, <laughs> to, a, yes. to a wood in the UK? <laughs> yeah, they sent them to Croydon. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> like, go, survive, survive at the shopping centre. <laughs> Um, <laughs> see if you can make it on the tram. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and so and he, 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 I saw his show and it was it was great and it was so fun. And I was like, oh, I feel like this is kind of viable for a comedian, but I feel like everyone discounts it, uh, kind of just out of kind of a, you know, I feel like everyone kind of goes like, oh, reality TV, and that's fine. I get that people are like that, but actually, you can kind of just bring yourself to an entirely new market, and. I hopefully, I did it without shaming myself too much, apart from getting my dick out. But, like, like <laughs> apart from getting my dick out on the internet, everything else would seem, went pretty well. <laughs> Which I think is a pretty good thing. But even that, I mean, let's talk about that then, seeing that's uh, come up, so to speak. <laughs> I mean, but it, this, is a, this is a very modern kind of cautionary tale, but also it's... You know, you've been caught doing something that m most young people will have done at some point. At some point. And you haven't really... I mean, let's I mean, say you've all. Not, you've not... You actually, you know, you, you're the victim of a, a crime, really. Yeah. You know, and you haven't done anything wrong. And I took it to the police and they laughed at me. <laughs> <laughs> so, if people don't know, because I know you have talked about this a, a, a fair amount, but you... So, you... 
uh, were catfished, is yes. the, is the, the phrase. Term. I mean, you were quite stupid. Yes. I think naive. it's fair to say. <laughs> Very naive. But it's just like, you know, I, I just, you know, I was, it was a long, quite a long time ago. And it, when some, a lady on the internet gives you some affection and you're just like, well, all right, I'll get my dick out. Yeah. That's literally how I went. It was really funny. There was this documentary that came out recently and it was like probably like six months ago, something like that. It was on Channel 4. And it was basically a guy who was investigating the same people that got me and uh, same girl that got me. And uh, he came to one of my tour shows. He literally like banged on the door, the stage door. And I was like, who, who are you? And he said, can I interview you? I've, it was like a real sort of like, you know, fly on the wall. I felt like I was sort of a, on one of those building traders right. uh, programs. <laughs> and um, rogue traders thing. And it, so he comes to, and he said, can I interview you? And I was like, yeah, all right. And it, it, which apparently, I was told by my, my agent is the wrong thing to say. But <laughs> he sat down and we talked about it. He'd been, uh, he'd, uh, been catfished in exactly the same way, but he, and he sat, it was, it was so funny, because he, he sat with her, he was like really distressed about it, clearly. And he was like, oh, so this lady, she contacted me, and um, we, we talked for probably back and forth for about 18 months before I finally got up the courage and I trusted her enough that I had Skype sex with her. Joel, how long did it take you before you trusted her? <laughs> and I just went, 20 minutes. And he, <laughs> the look on his face was so, like, he was like, oh, no! It was but so I see, funny. I laughed at the But that's incredible. So, like, what... I mean, it's, inc it's incredible for him. I think it's more incredible for him, right? But also for the person doing it, right? It's, an, it's a huge amount of commitment. That's it. They have to pretend to be this person. They have to chat you up or chat with you for maybe 18 months, yes. which is ridiculous. And then the chances of them getting anything out of it, unless they're just... Because, you know, you, if, if they, then, they then came to you, you got... You got video the thing that you should have spotted was when she said oh my, the microphone on my computer's broken yes. uh which is very similar to james acaster with uh when he was talking to lembe opic uh <laughs> doing his 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 uh shuffle thing we talked about this a couple of weeks ago uh he had his ipod shuffle thing and lembe opic turned up and said oh yeah my ipod's broken f for some reason so i've got this other ipod only full of good songs that's the uh, difference between me and james yeah. acaster like i'm talking to a person who i think's got boobs and he's talking to lembe opic yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it might well be Lembert Oak. Yeah, it's probably I'm, was I'm, I'm fairly, <laughs> Yeah, actually. I'm fairly... But like, so it's a massive commitment. Yeah. And that's you what... have to, like, watch a man masturbating, which maybe you're into, maybe you're not. Who knows? And then you're going to... Some months later, it was. It took a little while for them to get back to you. Yeah. And you were trying to contact the girl because you liked her and <laughs> wanted to do it again, I presume. <laughs> uh, and... Um, and then they say, you know, we want three thousand pounds or whatever. That whatever. Yeah, it was something like that. And yeah. most people are going to go, well, no, because yeah. you'll just put the pictures up anyway. It's won't you? There's no, there's no way, there's no way. So they're not really going to make much money out of it, and then they're investing all this time. And they ended up selling it for like fifty pounds, I think, online right. to like people to if they wanted to buy the whole video. Okay. Um, yeah. It's still available. My book is also available, but the, um, <laughs> uh, but the. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell whether that's clapping or people <laughs> masturbating. <laughs> I don't know whether that's. Um, the, but I, uh, yeah, that's. I think genuinely the last message I said to them was like, I mean, I should be angry, but fair play to you. You've really <laughs> played a hell of a game. Because <laughs> it's like, yeah, they, they've like. I mean, I suppose they're kind of making a living out of it, really. But are they? I mean, this just seems like, go and get a job, mate. This is a lot I of know. work. This is hard work. It's so uh, much and, and work. It, you still have to look at Joel Domit masturbating. I know. And, uh, so that's, it's like, I mean, it's difficult really, for me. I like, mean, maybe that's... And I see it all the time. You know, you know, like, I mean, it must be hard when you listen back to your podcast. You're yeah. like, oh, my voice. Imagine <laughs> me looking at my own dick. I'm like, oh, I do it like that. Well, I don't... I don't listen back to these, so <laughs> <laughs> it's too embarrassing. I haven't. I'm, it is available online. I haven't seen you masturbating because uh, I didn't want to ruin it in case it happens in real life for me. So that, that, so that, you know, I'm still. I'm just hoping that's that for we'll... the VIP customers who wasn't paid more. <laughs> Well, we might, we might talk about that again later, but that's. Uh, uh, you're wearing a beanie hat while you're masturbating, I was which is embarrassing, a beanie. and I was... you had a. It was quite a grainy image, but you had a post, your own poster uh, behind you. Yeah. <laughs> luckily, <laughs> luckily behind you. I mean, if it had been, 
<laughs> that was the thing. It was no, so just, quick. just to help me out, I'm going to get <laughs> <Yeah>. that. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Not really doing it. Again, I looked around at my four-star review. <laughs> <and I'm> like, <laughs> my fake four-star review from The Guardian. <laughs> Yeah, it was uh, it's grainy enough that you're like, and I haven't got a beard, so you could be like, oh, that's not Joel. And then you go, there's a massive poster that says, Joel, don't hit the Oh, that's Joel. That's definitely. So it's a bit, it's, but you know, they, they did release, so that's you sort of think, are we going to threaten to release it? And then they did release it. Yeah, when I, when I went to the jungle, yeah, they released so, it then. Yeah. So they waited till you, you got a bit more famous. Again, fair play to them. Yeah. And this is like, no, this is the amazing thing. Um, your brother is like a, a good PR, right? Is no, it? no, it's not. James. James isn't related to me. But oh no, no, yeah. oh, they're completely but... wrong information. <laughs> um, but there's someone who's got. A, is, is there someone? There's James Herring who used to work for Avalon, weirdly, and used to be. Uh, I don't know why I thought he was your brother. Well, because there are connected. Weirdly, I mean, because he got the same surname. <laughs> so. His family are from the same part of the country as me oh. originally. Weirdly, he went to school with a guy called Jeremy Herring. Who then directed? Who they, he then suggested to direct my plays, and I only got him to direct my plays because he nearly had the same name as me. <laughs> and he's gone on to be an award-winning, amazing director. He's very, very good. So there's these weird co coincidences with uh, with that name. But yeah, he, he used to work for Avalon, so I knew him quite a long. But yeah, he's got and his I, own. He's I, got his own PR company now. And I spoke to him before I went into the jungle. Oh, yeah. Because um, the the uh, yeah, so I sort of I wrote the show about it before I went in to the jungle because I knew it was going to come out at some point. So I was like. Oh, what I'll do is I'll sort of prepare myself a sort of arsenal of, of an hour of jokes about it. Yeah. And then, um, and at that point, it hadn't sort of happened yet. So, uh, or sort of come, come out yet. So I thought, okay, I'll do. But then that was the, why the decision was kind of even bigger for me to go into the jungle because I was like, it's definitely going to happen now because you know it's that they would be silly to not. Yeah. yeah. Not. And so I, um, and then I, because the, the, the Edinburgh show story was was just because I was trying to trying to find an end to it it became really mad so like I I ended up because I went to the police and it was all that was all crazy and I tried to contact the person and I couldn't really get anywhere trying to find the person and so I ended up um, just uh, screen grabbing and uh, the picture and then uh, put it on Google image search and I found the actual real person who was whose profile photo they stole and um, and I messaged them, and they lived like down the road, and so like they lived like a mile away from me in Greenwich. And so I was like, oh, so I messaged the real person whose real face it was, and I was like, look, I just let you know someone's using your profile. Um, do you like? Do you want to meet up? And um, <laughs> uh, <then. laughs> I've already wanked over what I thought was you. <laughs> so you know. I, I reckon you're on to a definite shag if you want one, <laughs> with a bloke who has wanked over you. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then we, we met up, and then we dated for a month. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a shit. It's such a. I know it's like, hey, hey, but <laughs> it's genuinely like a, it's, good, it's a good end, isn't it? <laughs> How was it? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I ended up, she, this is the bad thing, she ended up moving back to Russia, where she, she, she lived in Russia, she lived in Wales, and then, then she moved back to Russia, and then uh, we actually had Skype sex. <laughs> right. So that it went full circle. It went full circle, what a beautiful romantic, a romantic story. <laughs> if only you'd married her, I think your book would have been a lot better. Uh, but <laughs> weren't you worried that that might be part of the real long con sting. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. they think, I think this guy will try and find the real girl, and then when he does, it'll turn out she's a super double agent goat. She's going to go deep, this one. She's going to be in a relationship with her. Oh. Then she'll move to, back to Russia, and then we'll get him to send all the money across. Weren't you worried about that? I, will, I should have. I, to be fair, I've been caught once, and I, <laughs> I should probably put my guard up a little. Yeah, I think you and should. Then, I met my, my fiance on the internet. So I just, there's no hope for me, really. So I met my current fiance. I have to, it's bad to put current in the front of that one. But, um, but I met my fiance. My current fiance. Yes, no. <laughs> there's the first person since Darren Date, and we use that phrase. So uh, it's. Uh, <laughs> But I mean, it's, but it's I mean, it's it's great for as a comedian. That kind of thing is sort of great. You'd already yeah. decided to do a show about it. I mean, you know, it's 
I can see when you've talked about it and I've seen you interviewed about it, you're genuinely still embarrassed about it. It's yeah. still an awful thing it's re- to it's happen. Really horrible. But it's very serious because p- these guys are doing this to people and y- yeah. you know, and kids are, are, are getting caught up in this and, and, and killing themselves sometimes over this. That's thing. it. It's like genuinely, like in school, it's like a mad... It's a kind of an epidemic, really, like because it's obviously an easy way to get money out of people, like... It's an easy like, and if you're a kid and you don't, you, you know, you're young and you're, you're embarrassed and you like, I'm lucky in the position I'm. I'm not a teacher or I'm not in a position where I could lose my job or anything, and so like, if anything, I get more work. So it's, uh, <laughs> I can just. It's uh, almost like you set this up yourself. Yeah, I was like. <laughs> <laughs> I quite like the idea of people watching me on Pornhub masturbating. <laughs> I was like, it's 50 pounds of video. <laughs> um, and uh, so it's like, yeah, I mean, it's all fun, but like, it's hopefully if anyone... I did get a lot of messages from people saying, this happened to me, it was really horrible, you helped me deal with it. You know, it's not... It's, it's, I'm not saying I'm a hero. <laughs> but, <laughs> of all the wanking men, you're the most heroic wanking man I've ever talked to. I'm wanking man! <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it is that thing. I mean, I, get, I, I sort of wonder whether we'll get to a point with all this stuff where people go... Oh, fuck it. If the internet proves anything, it's that everyone does everything. Yes. <laughs> that people are disgusting. Yeah. Especially men, probably, but also, you know. Yeah, it's fine. You know, and that's, there's, you know, it's just the embarrassment of being caught. I mean, it's, if, you, if it is kids, you know, if, it's a, if, if people are doing it to 16, 17 year olds, then you can think, God, yeah, that would be so humiliating. And actually, since, but, since it all happened, the the law is really tightened and like and actually like there's a whole department for it and all that stuff for just that, wank, for wanking just wanking, <laughs> <laughs> wanking no department wanking. yeah come in yeah we'll get, we'll get them off the streets into a department <laughs> wanking department <laughs> just <laughs> let me in I mean yeah oh. yeah it's you know you're disgusting. <laughs> 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 but the book which I've neglected to bring out with me is in the dressing room or maybe I should George go and find that book uh, <laughs> I was, oh, I'm sorry about that stuff I said about you being incompetent before <laughs> you might, that might, this book might hit you on the head Joel as, <laughs> as it gets thrown in uh, but this is a little bit uh, I mean I was, I was saying before, uh, you, before uh, when I was talking to the audience that I've written a book that was quite similar about the year I turned 40 yes uh, but you've only slept with forty people. That's nothing. Uh, so, <laughs> it's, uh, but it's it is it's a, it's an interesting book because again, you're very honest about your sex life and your failures and successes. And so, so it, it, the the idea of the book is it's um, you, you as a uh, child in your diary wrote that you well, a young man you'd had sex once and you yeah. were worried you weren't very good at it and you thought you'd be good at it once you had sex with forty people. Yeah, Let's chuck it across. Hit jo- Oh, that's very kind of you, George. That was. The most competent thing you've ever done. Uh, so uh, here is it's not me, it's them. Yes. Um, so it's it's kind of a it's a autobiography it's, that th- via all the women you've shagged. Yeah. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, and it's like you know because for forty, it, it like it, I just it's um, kind of the amount where it's a lot, but it's also by. By modern standards, oh, shit thing to say, but by modern standards, people are fucking mental now, and they go out and they just like with Tinder and everything. They like it's mad. Like people say, with so many people, <laughs> and so forty is actually not that many. But also, from a stand-up comedian's point of view, it's like, it's I, I also just use it as a framework to like, you know, and it's like, so it's kind of like it's all tr- it's all true, but it's like. There's a, obviously a few fabrications in terms of trying to make it the, the right structure to make it work as a book. Like, yeah. it's how I put my shows together. And basically, I, I'm sure you write your books in the, the same way, but it's basically like writing 10 Edinburgh shows and then fitting those 10 Edinburgh shows together, yeah, yeah. essentially. I mean, it's, a, you know, it's, a, it's an interesting idea and it's a nice way of doing it. And it's, uh, you know, but I think there's, a, you know, you've obviously kept. Uh, a record of somewhere of the people, <laughs> a list of the, of the, which I think a lot of people do. Yeah. Um, it was not in like a creepy way. Well, you know, I didn't sort it's of like you weren't masturbating to that woman in a creepy way, were you? <laughs> it, was a, it was a romantic didn't have way. sellotaped hair and stuff like that. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I just, and then I framed it through, uh, the, uh, the idea is that I'm on a, um, uh, my first date with my person I'm about to marry in September. And, um, uh, but, Currently, and um, 
Uh, I mean, it's not your first date. <laughs> we're about to get married in September. This is our first date. What? Uh, so you, you, you've subsequently got together. Yes. And are about to get married. In September. And it's and it's like I I started writing that book probably when we've been together for like uh, six months and we've been together like uh, almost sort of uh, two and a half years now and uh, so it's all still good. Yeah. It's like good. great. <laughs> and um, so I the end of the book is I. Um, I just basically I, I proposed to her at the end of the book, and I sort of ripped out the last page, and I um, got her to come come into the flat. She read the whole book. She was like, "Oh, the last page is ripped out," and I said, oh, "I'll come home. I'm not really sure about the ending yet. It was like the first draft." And um, and I just before she came, I put loads I put loads of candles in the flat because that's what they did on Friends, and um, <laughs> and, and then um, I uh, I put on a sa- I put on um, like a classical. Spotify playlist because I thought that's kind of <laughs> feels quite sort of nice and um, and then uh, and I, had, I bought a candelabra. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, don't know I, did, I just I bought a candle. I thought that's what the kind of thing you'd do. And then um, and then uh, just before she she got through the door, I was pretty panicked is that the music was so depressing <laughs> and so so funereal. And so I was like, okay. And so I I quickly changed it to sort of a soundtrack classical playlist. And, um, and so she comes through the door, and it was much more better, it was like, I'll be, and she comes in, and I, like, I get down on one knee, and I read her the last page, and when I go, honestly, this is true, as soon as I start to read the Will You Marry Me, the, the Jurassic Park theme tune <laughs> comes out. <laughs> and... <laughs> So genuinely, I was just like, will you? I was like, da, 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 da. it's beautifully planned. And, um, <laughs> so that's, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I was because the book is, yeah, ends with, as, as you, as spoilers, it ends with this proposal. I was kind of wondering whether you'd given the book to it, because my wife writes books and I often yeah. leave them for like six months before I read them. <laughs> <laughs> she writes so many now, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll read it eventually. Like, well, you just sort of wait, go, hurry up, hurry up and read the book. Because uh, yeah, I so, started comedy with your wife. Yes. Like, right, like way back, like, like 11 years ago. I remember we were like, yeah, it was me and Katie and there was a few, like, few we basically all started at the same time. We were all at the same gigs all the time. Yeah. And um, so it's lovely. I was, when you guys got together, it was very, it's very exciting. Oh. It's so lovely that it's, it's all still great and it's all like, it, she's well, still around, you know? So yeah, cool. well, I'm still... Well, no, that sounded I've bad. got... But like, I've got... Like, you know, but like... I mean, I'm as surprised as anyone. <laughs> it's just really cool. I, just, <laughs> it's, I, I it's think she's nice. a lovely person. Yeah, we've got kids, there's no escape. <laughs> uh, so there's no way out. Also, I'm too old to escape. Uh, and also, I... <laughs> In I, that jumper, you look like you've escaped. <laughs> 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 it's a prison I love job. her. All right, I love her. Shut up. I still love her. I love her more than I ever did. Idiot. <laughs> the idiot. That was so <laughs> Ruining my life by making me happy. <laughs> um, <laughs> I hope you're. Uh, you're well, you, so you get married this year? Yes, in September. Yeah. Wow. Have you got any tips? Um. <laughs> uh, don't masturbate with other women on the internet yep. that's a given uh, if you do just try not to get filmed <laughs> be one of those people um, who puts tape over the camera yeah, yeah. fuck off do uh, what they tell you to do what they tell you to yeah, do. Okay. don't disagree with them okay don't disagree that should work both ways but apparently not <laughs> um, <laughs> I only have one child and really look after it so, <laughs> we had a um, we had a meeting about the wedding where we were getting married abroad, and um, but then we found out that we had to go to like um, a sort of uh, what, what do you call it when you go have, you got to go to like a sort of ch- ch- chapel, VD clinic VD clinic <laughs> <laughs> you know like you have to go to a, a ceremony place where you have to sign the documents oh, yeah, yeah. before you go because actually. The wedding abroad is not a we- it's not a wedding. Yeah, the old Mick Jagger excuse. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so and um, but so then, but then I've, now I'm saying on a podcast. But I I, I just said I said to her I was, she was like oh so we've got to sign the documents before you go and because it's not it's not a proper wedding when you're there. And so I was like oh so basically we're paying for a play. <laughs> and she was like don't call it a play in front of in front of the wedding planner. Um, <laughs> But um, but yeah, we're doing a play ne- next year. Um, <laughs> this year, 
So that's exciting. Yeah, that'd be, it's lovely. It's a, it's, it's, I'm really excited. It's a great, you know, enjoy the day. I think the thing is, it's, it's uh, you know, it can be so much pressure yeah. and organisation. And actually, you just, you know, I think it's, if you're going away, that's a great thing to do because you should have a laugh. Yeah. Not too many people can come. Exactly. Yeah. Well, there's, we've only got, we've got 27 people coming. Okay, that's and, right. That's um, nice. And uh, because we, we picked a beach that could only hold 30 people. Right. <laughs> and so it was just, we, yeah, we immediately, it says three, so there's still three spaces if you fancy okay. it, Richard. Might I was come. leaving it open for you. Okay, that's nice to know. At, um, <laughs> Where's it going to be? <laughs> In Mykonos. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so it's very, it's very exciting. We've kind of had, we've not, we don't really know each other. No. It's quite weird because it's like, like, I think genuinely, I think you're the only person over 11 years of being a stand-up comedian. I think genuinely, I think you're the only comedian I've, I've avoided. Um, <laughs> but like, not on purpose. Like, it's like, I feel like we've just not, we've never crossed paths. I, I think, think maybe we, we said one hello gig. or something. I think it was a gig, I remember meeting you at a gig. Yeah. And thinking, you're a bit too good looking. <laughs> and uh, you were quite, I, th I could sense you were quite ambitious. I can't remember oh, what I'm it sorry. was exactly. No, no, but you were, but then that, it's that, that's not a bad thing, I don't think, because I think you need to be now. I think yeah. you're sort of driven. You were interested. And Louisa, when I met Louisa Armelan the first time as well, she was just asked me loads of questions about, yeah. you know, and I kind of thought, okay, yeah, she's going to do quite well, this girl. It's just, well, ho hopefully, it, I just, I mean, I just, I, I like to think that hopefully people think I'm a good enough comedian to, to, uh, to hold up my career. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that, but you have to. That's you, the you, worst you, thing you I don't think you, you can't do comedy now and no. be, and not be a good. That's it, and it's like it's um, yeah. Hopefully, uh, and even with the the jungle thing, when I did I did a, a huge tour after it, obviously, and because you sort of capitalise on that, and it was like 130 dates, and it was it was massive. It was so it was like my wildest dreams, and um, and it was great because I knew I had loads of stuff. And you had like, a, it was like an amalgamation of five Edinburgh shows worth all sort of put together. And, and what I wanted from it was people who hadn't seen comedy before, people who had never seen me do comedy before, hopefully will all leave and be like, oh, that's way better than I thought. That's, <laughs> and um, it's, uh, yeah, and I, I think hopefully what most people experience in my comedy is that they even think it was better than they thought it was going to be. <laughs> um, but you've been playing, you've been playing the Hamster of Apollo on your tours. Yeah. And, you know, so you, it's a big deal. And it's, and that's the difficulty now is building that audience. You either have to build an audience very slowly yeah. by, by going back and, and working really hard or, you know, or try and get that bump. But then there's no, get the people won't stay with you unless you've given them a good night of comedy you know? yeah. so that they, there's so there's a hundred comedians touring all the time and so you want, there's a lot of choices if someone goes and sees you and has spent whatever they've spent yeah. and it wasn't any good they're not going to go let's give him four more tries yeah. and, then, <laughs> and from my perspective it was like I, I knew that bubble of the ridiculousness wasn't going to last so it's like yeah it was crazy at that point but I <laughs> want to be able to go on another tour and if 50% 25 30 percent of those people come back to my next tour i've still got a tour like it's yeah. fine i don't want it to completely i don't want three thousand people at the the hammersmith apollo to walk away being like i am not seeing that guy again <laughs> absolutely not. that'd Just... be quite impressive if you managed that though <laughs> that, that's the, that's one way to go i'll get three thousand people in and piss them off so <laughs> much so much he is absolutely <laughs> racist secretly he held that in in the jungle how a long time how did he hold it in when he was so hungry <laughs> Hey, I want to. I want to. Don't. I should have talked to James Acaster about this a couple of weeks ago, and I didn't. But you were on Pointless with James Acaster. I was, yeah. You did quite well to begin with, and then you had, you bombed out. We really, we really fucked up real bad. You, you took some chances, and I admired that. Yeah, but it was stupid. We went, we went, we went, Acaster was particularly stupid. <laughs> we went down. We went down in a ball of flames. Yeah, and it was. Um, yeah, it was really fun because it, it was a comedian special. And um, and of course, because it was called a comedian special, and it's just like it's like a daytime show. Of course, that sort of on Twitter, everyone's like, comedians never fucking heard of them. <laughs> uh, oh God, a comedian, they're just supposed to be funny, Brexit. Um, and, and so, uh, but it was so fun. And so we just, because I used to do the warm up on Pointless. Oh, right, yes, yes. I did that for like two years or something. So yeah. I felt like I was kind of like, it's like being back there again and I was part of the family and everyone's still the same. It was so nice. And, um, and we, yeah, we really, we really, I fuck, we fucked up. But like. Um, I just, because I watched the end and um, 
it's uh, Tom Allen and Ellie Taylor, I think, who get through to the final bit. Mm. And right until the last 10 seconds of the last round, Ellie Taylor is trying to get the highest scoring answer. <laughs> so she's managed to get to the final, into the final bit. And she's going, oh, Andrew Lloyd Webber's musicals. Um, Phantom of the Opera, that'll be a good one, wouldn't it? That'd be high. And Tom Allen's going, well, well, quite a lot of people know that. She's going, yeah, that's, that's good, though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, she's going, oh, do we have to get, like, the lowest one? She's like, what? Is this not family So portions? she got through. <laughs> Someone got through to the final. I mean, it annoys me. I've been th on three times and not at one. It's so difficult. Someone got through to the final and didn't understand what the game was. <laughs> <laughs> and they got a fucking pointless answer. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's frustrating. <laughs> it was really, it was, yeah, it was, um, yeah, we played an anarchy game. We sat down. You were very, that was fun. You all sat down. We all sat down. Richard just, Osman stood up. It, yeah. was, it was very good. Yeah, so I always thought he was, you know, he's just, he's so, so tall. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over it. Um, <laughs> so, uh, well, uh, let's, well, let's quickly talk, talk about um, you and Nish Kumar, you kind of you, you managed to team up with a lot of different uh, of these comedians of yeah. your generation. So you and Nish, who we had on quite recently, he was a replacement for someone who couldn't turn up. Really? Yeah, we wouldn't have had him on normally. <laughs> uh, and um, <laughs> he's a very good comedian. And you'd, you, you're, you're, um, you'd, you'd going around the world. To get, is there, are there any more of those, Joel and Nish Fingers versus got, the world? They, they, yeah, I think so. And that's quite a nice job, isn't it? Oh, it's really fun. Yeah, we, um, we kind of, uh, we started it when, um, you know, when, when travelogues weren't being done <laughs> so frequently. And, um, and uh, basically, if you don't know, it's like called John Nish versus the world. And, um, and it's, we basically go to all the fittest tribes in the world, communities in the world, and try and keep up with them for a week. And, um, and it's, it's amazing. We like just go to the most insane places. Uh, although on the third series, they've told us that, that budgetary-wise, we will not go to be going to such insane places. Okay. <laughs> uh, we may be staying in crazy Europe. Yeah. Um, and uh, and uh, but we... <laughs> and so... Uh, but it's about, like, you know, we went to, like, Mexico, and I had to run this, like, ultra marathon. It was, like like 35 miles, 33 miles, something. And then I tried to do it in sandals and then I was just, it was horrible. And Why um, did you try and do it in sandals? Is because that's what they would have done. That's in what they Greece. did, yeah. yeah. And so yeah. it's like, because I've got this thing where I like really like, I, lo I love doing the fitnessy stuff. I really love going for it and doing it. And Nish really loves laughing at me. So it's like a perfect, <laughs> perfect team. But did team. he do the run as well? He did, did well, he joined in on the run in the last four miles. It was a, okay. Honestly, that was the most amazing episode. Like that was the most insane episode for me out of all of them it's on netflix if you want to see it it's so good and it's um there's this uh, tribe called the tarahumara and they're just insane incredible runners they're naturally amazing long distance runners and to the point where sort of americans have gone keep going there and then uh, since the 80s they sort of found this tribe and they've <laughs> tried to sort of take take advantage of them really and like put them in give them sponsorships and try and get them to run races but then that's all really messed up and stuff and um, and then uh, they're just incredible. It's so nice, and they really cut themselves off from the world. And I, they have this drink, and I think it's called Pinole. And it's basically it's like a, it's their version of an, an energy drink. And they all drink it before a race. And uh, um, during the race, they all sort of hand it out to have a sip of it. And it's so you're supposed to have a sip. And Nish, the <laughs> night before the race, he would sort of we did a scene where he's like, Joel, I found you put some Pinole. I've got some, it gives me a bottle of it, like a Volvic massive bottle of it. <laughs> and I think it, I thought it'd be really funny to down, uh, to down it. I thought it'd be really funny in the scene to be like, to drink it, and be like, I feel amazing, yeah! And I did that and I was like, fine. And uh, then we all went to sleep and I woke up in the morning and I shat myself more <laughs> than I've ever, I shat my insides out. There was no, there was no insides left. It was, I, like, every, I would leave the toilet and I'd be like, okay, cool, I'm absolutely fine! And just keep shaking. And, like, it was insane. I've never had it in my life. And, um, and basically, I didn't know, but it's actually a diuretic and it's, like, it's got, like, oil in it. It's, like, like really bad to drink loads of it. And, um, and the thing was, they, they're, they're, they're sort of, the the traditional dress that they do these running, these running races in is, like, a white skirt. <laughs> So they give me this white skirt to go in and I'm, th I'm like literally like I'm standing there let alone re running for 32 miles and I'm like I'm going to shit my white skirt before the start line 
and so I'm in this like white skirt, and I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna shit myself. And Nish is just going like, ha ha ha, Brexit. And um, and and he's just like laughing so much. And then we we start the race, and I'm like, I'm I'm like, all I want to do is just not shit myself by the first corner, and the embarrassment of going like, God, this is the guy who's travelled from England to just join in this race. They've never had it before. A guy come in and enjoy this race, and I just go go, and he just goes and shits everywhere. And, um, and luckily, I literally, I waddled to the first corner and then it kind of, and then the doctor gave me loads of stuff that sort of makes you not shit yourself. And, um, and then I, I sort of continued running and then it kind of, there was a few times where I thought I was going to do it and then I didn't. And I ran the whole like 33 miles. Nish helped me for the last, and I, there's, I, I love running. Like I love running so much. And it's like, if, if you, it's such a mad thing. Like it's something, something about it because it's so repetitive, and that's obviously why it's bad. But it's also there's something that's so brilliant about it because it makes you just think about stuff and it clears your mind and it's and it's like so wonderful and it's also so weirdly emotional. When I've done marathons in the past and that and that one, I like got to mile 25 and I just could not stop crying and then I got to like mile 26 and I wanted to shit myself again <laughs> and I was basically like shitting and crying for the last four miles while Nish was just running beside me and I just was crying my eyes out every time I walked past like the, and the, 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 the guys were so lovely the whole town was so and they were cheering me on and every time they would cheer and be like go and they'd hand me some panola I'd be like no <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, I ju- and then I finished the race and I was in like I was in tears for like hours, and um, and then then uh, annoyingly because he'd give me so many pills that like, I didn't shit for like three days. <laughs> they got completely the other way, and um, and but it's it's uh, that was one of the most amazing experiences yeah. of my life. It's such an amazing thing to be a part of. I wonder sometimes whether it's as amazing to watch as it is to be in it. <laughs> Do you think it was the shitting yourself that made it special? Or that yeah. Was, yeah. I think it was. And I don't actually think they really sort of contained it in the episode, to be honest. They contained another, <laughs> basically, on every episode. I don't know whether this is interesting or disgusting, but the, um, <laughs> on every episode, someone in the crew or cast shits themselves profusely right. because of obviously the places you go to. And we went to Peru, and, um, and I, I just one of the f- funniest moments I've ever experienced in my life. Uh, I, the, the, and at the start of every episode, Nish basically goes, I, I go like, where are we, Nish? And Nish tells me as if I'm fucking stupid. <laughs> and and um, because that's our dynamic and it's fun. Like, and because I'm like, what's Brexit? And he's just like, oh, well. And, and, then, and so I go, where are we, Nish? And he goes, oh, we're in Peru, Joel. And he'd just been had this mad stuff. And like, we just set up this shot. It was the most beautiful shot. I had this beautiful, massive crucifix in the back, which is like overseeing this huge, like vista, beautiful mountains. And it took like hours to like set the shot up. And we get, we start walking down. And we go, I go, I go, I go so where are we, Nish? And he goes, we're in Peru, Joel. And we're like, oh, just runs away. And just shits himself <laughs> in the bushes. And you can just hear it on the microphone. He's like, ah! <laughs> Honestly, to this day, and they kept that in the episode because that is the funniest thing. You can't get funnier than sort of shooting themselves in the introduction. But there's a bit in your book where you... I mean, there's lots of bits in your book about this sort of thing. There's a bit in you're flying back from I'm a Celebrity and you shit yourself on in business yeah, class. Yeah, I shot myself in business class. Because you ate too many cheesecakes. Because I... Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, the, the, the doctors tell you to not eat dairy. Um, and so immediately I got out and ate two cheesecakes. <laughs> And um, yeah, and I just vomited everywhere. But it was so soon after I'd eaten the cheesecake, it still tasted like cheesecake. It's nice. <laughs> and you'd been eating uh, goats' testicles and penises before. Exactly. Yeah. So you know, still that's that's still better than that, isn't it? Was it was horrible, but I was still like, I was like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it was delicious. Is it that? Is it that bad eating t- animals' t- uh, testicles? It's actually not that. B- no, I, it's, it's all right. I hate to say it. It's actually not that bad. Yeah. Like you. You, you're so hungry by that point that you just will eat anything that's not rice and beans. And this is the thing that everyone, after, every, for years now, everyone is like, oh, yeah, you get snacks, though, don't you? You get snacks on the side. <laughs> and, um, but you don't. You just, yeah, I, they, they don't even tell you in the show how, they, like, they can't convey how hungry you are. Like, it's insane, like, how hungry you are. And um, you just talk about food or basically... The, the I'm a celebrity get me out of here that you see on television is basically 
what's left when they've edited out you talking about food. <laughs> that's essentially it. That's essentially and it. you get to sleep, though, and that's why that I, I, I'm now quite tempted to go on, because I'd actually get some sleep. Yes. You slept, you slept the best some... sleep you'll ever have in your life. The guy from uh, Diversity slept for 23 hours one day. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that just sounds like... He- I mean, like, if you can just literally allow to stay asleep, doesn't anyone come and poke you and say, you've got to do a challenge, mate? I'm asleep. Shut it's up. fucking amazing. He's so tall, you just always see this massive leg over the side of his hammock. And you're like, oh, is Jordan's asleep again? It's, um, it's like, it's, yeah, it's mad. And I try to not sleep because then I'd just go into the Bush Telegraph and talk instead. Yeah. And, um, but it's the best sleep you'll ever have in your life. Like, because you don't have coffee, you don't have sugar, you don't have, like, you don't have hardly anything. So it's just like completely it cleanses you of everything. Yeah, I'm going on. You should go on. Just you should go on. Do you think you like? I know you you, you would, but you you do great. <laughs> like you do great. I mean, you've got other stuff going on, but like, you know, I think you're a nice man. I am. You know, I mean, yeah. no, I'm real. I'm realizing now I shouldn't have avoided you for eleven years. <laughs> but you're a nice man. I I'd, I'd just I I'd, I'd like to eat the insects and the testicles and stuff, but I can do that at home. Yes. <laughs> To get them all, true. order them in. Just to see if I can do it. Oh yeah, I can do it. It's fine. That's true. Not a problem. That's true. You just order them in. Just order order in some some insects. It'd be like the, the guy, the delivery guy, would be like, "Have you got testicles?" Right. <laughs> right. I'm going to ask you an emergency question. This is one I've kind of not got written down, uh, but it's. I think it might be interesting to you. Um, John Ronson was on, and he was doing, He's done a podcast about uh, in the porn industry now because it's Bus they don't make much effect, money. Yeah. yeah. They they uh, do. Uh, they do kind of tailored porn to your yes. to your particular fetish. If you could have, I mean, it doesn't have to be an actual fetish, but if you could get porn stars to do anything, the weirdest fetish that you could think of, and they will do whatever you say that isn't currently available on the internet, what would you choose? What do you think is not catered for? For me, uh, there's not much um, porn involving ventriloquist dummies wanking yeah. people up. <laughs> Yeah. And so I would happily pay some porn actors to do that for yeah. me. No, I'm not interested in watching it, just be interested in it happening. Do you think there's a fetish that's not... Have you got a fetish that is not uh, uh, capable? for? Um, if there's anyone who would answer this question, it should be you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, luckily, the fetish of myself is already taken. <laughs> yeah, that's already taken. It's quite easy to find. Um, and uh, uh, being a guest on a podcast, wow. that fetish hasn't really... That's a real... <laughs> that'd that... be a grey one. Oh, all right, come no. on then. <laughs> if you're lonely, man, if you I'm, could I just run me up and said, I'm, I just want to be wanked off, I'd have come around and done it for you. But... Uh, yeah, I don't... Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a hard question, it's a hard question. Well, literally. Here's, a, here's an easier question that I think the answer is yes to, and I haven't asked this for a long time. Uh, Joel? Yes? Have you ever tried to suck your own cock? <laughs> yes, of course you have. <laughs> How did yes. it go for you? Obviously. Yeah. Like any man that hasn't tried, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> you're a fucking, what are you doing with your life? Like at some point, someone's gone like, nah. <laughs> oh, no, I can't. Um, but, but then I, I wish I had, well, the first time I ever tried, I would probably, did, did, like. I mean, if you'd been able to do it, you wouldn't have gotten all that trouble, would you? That's, that's probably, that's, the that's it. I mean, I probably wouldn't have done anything. No. I wouldn't have, wouldn't have got a job. I still, I wouldn't be doing this. I wouldn't have written a book. I definitely wouldn't have written a book. I would have got nothing done in my life. I, um, it's at that point where you, you're sort of, it's exciting in your life where you found this new toy and like, you're suddenly like, what? And I just, yeah, you, 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 of course you, of course you try. When I first found masturbation when I was 14, I then uh, fell off my bike and broke, broke both my wrists and was in a cast. So two casts. So I then, I then was, I just found this thing and I was like, oh shit. <laughs> uh, and so I just, I mean, you're 14, so you still do it. You just sort of, you know, you sort of, it's, it's sort of grated away with two casts. <laughs> Absolutely fine. <laughs> Hopefully that won't be as, as graphic to the, the podcast listener. You know it's being filmed, right? It's being filmed. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Secretly filming you. Yeah. I want 50 pounds or this is going out on the internet. Um, what is the, what's the worst thing a teacher ever said to you at school? Or did you? I'll ask you as a man. Because I... Um, that, that, that teacher used to, used to say, mark my words, and I was like, that's literally your job. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, the, um, uh, yeah, I, I, I like, yeah, I had a, um, 
Uh, we, I think comedians all had teachers that were like, oh, you're not going to amount to anything, and all of that stuff. But um, I, always think, I always think the worst thing is, like, I, I, like I, I wish I went to school in America because they leave on the bell. You know, because when the bell goes, they grab their stuff and immediately go because that's what they do in the movies. But in England, you like you try like we've all we all try to leave on the bell. The bell goes, we grab our bag. But in England, they always go, ah, oh, no, you leave when I say, <laughs> not the bell. And you're like, well, why didn't you get rid of the fucking bell? <laughs> get yourself a watch. That's why. It's I good think. that you kept trying, though. That's the thing. The bell always went. You always tried, and they said, always oh, tried. The bell is a signal for me, not for you. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> like fucking, it's a fucking loud signal, that. It's a very distracting signal for a group of 30 kids. <laughs> Get a text now. In this day and age, that's what's going to happen. Right, let's look. Old school emergency questions. So I left my new school emergency question book backstage. Um, uh, uh, well, this is a good one. I've never, I don't think I've ever asked this. This is 111, if you're following at home. What is your favourite keyboard shortcut? <laughs> F4? <laughs> what does that do? Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> I have absolutely no idea. I don't, I don't really know. I don't really know. I don't really know. You don't really know What's any yours? shortcuts? Uh, am, I, am I allowed to flip I, your emergency um, questions? I like uh, Control Alt Delete. Control Alt Delete. I, mean, yeah. I was doing that with my hand. And I was like, "What's this one?" Because this one's my favourite. Control Alt Delete. <laughs> control Alt Delete. It's control Alt Delete. I like. Uh, I like the ones. I can't remember what they are now, but there's one that will mm. get you can get you e acute straight away without you oh. having to toggle through everything, without really having to go to another web page and copy and paste yeah. an e acute from somewhere else, which is what I usually do. Yeah. But you can go and find that. But I think there is a. I think there's buttons that. You, I love. Uh, I love it when you uh, you accidentally press the. In, is it the insert button that means it sort of goes back on itself, and so like and you're typing and then it won't. I don't really know what it does. To, I mean, you're like ah, and then I'm almost. I'd say probably about five to ten times in my life I've been like my computer's broken now, <laughs> but I didn't realise I accidentally pressed that button. Yeah. Well, once you got kids, my daughter managed to change. Uh, the pound symbol, like you know. Yeah, I know what a pound symbol. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not the pound, not the not, not the old not weight, Europe, but yeah. the, pound, the currency, <laughs> the old currency that will disappear <laughs> yes. uh, once we go back into the EU. You know the pound. Um, she's managed to put that on a different button, and I can't work out how. She just went, <laughs> and then now I've got to do what I used to do for the hash symbol. It now makes the yes. pound symbol. I've got two different computers, and they do it differently, and I can't. So I feel like they are probably going to actually just make the pound signal a hash signal. signal. <laughs> That's going to be like the international currency. We're all going to go together. We're just going to be like, um, yeah, I reckon I can I have that bagel for hash pounds, please. Yeah, that would be good. That could work. That could work, actually. Do you wash your legs when you're having a shower? Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, probably. Um, yeah, no, my, yes, I do. And I'll be... <laughs> My favourite part of the shower, I don't know whether it's, it's going to be one of those things where a comedian says a thing and then, uh, you know, the, the, the mark of a good bit is when you say an observation and people go, oh, ha, ha. <laughs> and of a, a bad one is when you say something and everyone goes, no, it's just you. And uh, I, when I wash myself in the shower and then before I get out, I just get all the water off my legs and I go, shum, shum. <laughs> and so much comes off yeah. and it feels great. Because I feel like I've just done so much of the towels job. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favourite. So okay. I feel like that washes most of my legs. I'm sure that does. That I sounds do like a stunts. very efficient, efficient wash. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that's... I basically... I'm trying to save on the towels. Okay. One more from here and then we're going to go back. Well, time's, time's moving on. It's moving well, on. Not as quickly as it did with last week's podcast, <laughs> but still... <laughs> Five. It's fine. Maybe we oh, won't look, speak for another you've 11 got years. Quite, have you got quite small feet? Yes, size seven. Oh, I've got size. I'm, yeah, I'm sort of... Like six eight, and a half, I'm, seven. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm sort of eight. So that's... I considered that small. For a tall man, that is small. Yeah, it's honestly, it's hard to stay stood up on a windy day. Yeah. It's just like... <laughs> It's um, they're yeah, they're very small. Like, and they look, um, but they I, look fine. Then. I quite like, I, I quite like it. I think it's absolutely fine. Yeah, um, they're smaller than my feet. That's yeah. I've got very small hands. Oh, I think you've got, I've got normal you've got, you've got hands. You've got regular big man's hands. Yeah. Um, I'd rather have small feet than uh, small hands because no one really notices the feet to the hand. It's true. A baby's hands on you. I mean, when you notice it, it's weird, isn't it? It's yeah, like, why has he got a little hands. girl's hands? What's that? 
They look like normal size next to your feet. And that's it. <laughs> that's it. If you were in the film The Cobbler <laughs> and you had a magical cobbling machine that if you cobbled the feet on there and then put the shoes on, you became that person. What person with size six or seven shoes would you become if you could become any person? For this, I understand you do need to know someone else's size six or seven yeah. shoes. Yeah. And it's I, unlikely. And I, I'd say, well, mainly women. Yeah. yeah. I think with size six or seven Well, it would make more sense because there's a bit where Adam Sandler, who has size maybe 11 feet, yeah. uh, the only way they can get him to be a woman is for him to do quite an offensive, certainly in the current climate, uh, transsex, trans vestite I think maybe or transsexual person uh, and so he becomes like an amusing man dressed as a woman and that is quite offensive yeah. uh, unusually for an Adam Sandler film <laughs> <laughs> it's ins <laughs> he's insensitive to quite an important issue and then tries to cover up by going hey we're all the same though I hate fags no come on I don't hate them I just don't want a dick in my mouth come on <laughs> um that's him not don't boo me that's Adam Sandler Unbelievable. that's just every Adam Unbelievable. Sandler film so it'd be good. You could effectively do that film and be women. Yeah, I would. Yeah, it'd be great. And I do. And I, me and oh, my... Or small girls. Me and yes. Like, Children. Give me two. Have you got size six, six feet? Yeah. It's just three hey, women. You could be, you could be uh, the lady in the front. You've got a size six feet as well. That's a yeah, we got could, a choice. Uh, there we go. I could have your life. It'd be great. It's like great because me would and you think my... Joel would prefer to be you than himself? Or do you, who do you think has got the better life out of the two of you? Uh, be honest. Joel. No, you're wrong. No. It's you, Lou. It's you. Um, I've read his book. He's, disgu he's literally disgusting. It doesn't matter that he's settled down now. I mean, I, you know, you, you could say this is the pot calling the kettle black. <laughs> <laughs> he's literally the most disgusting man. And I've had a champagne bottle put on my anus. <laughs> he's still disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. Make, he makes that seem charming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd make it into a video. What do you think the, what do you think's, <laughs> <laughs> what do you think's the worst... Uh, what do you think's the most disgusting story in, uh, in your book? Um, I mean, they're not all you being disgusting. No. Sometimes there are other people it's, being yeah, disgusting. Well, look, yeah, it's usually, usually the, it sort of turns around and it's not, it's yeah. not, you know, it shows me to be an idiot, not the other people yeah, that are in nice. it. But um, uh, a girl pissed on my floor yeah. like once. That was really horrible. I talked about that on stage a lot, but it's like, um, yeah, it was a Tinder date and then she came over and she was really drunk and then just she pissed on the floor. And um, I mean, Accidentally, or just uh, I can't be bothered to go to the toilet. I or, just, you didn't, or you refused to tell her where the toilet was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was like, I haven't got one. You're gonna have to go there. I live in a prison, um, and I uh, yeah. She she pissed she pissed a lot. I woke up about six o'clock in the morning, and um, and because uh, I just was like, well, just go to bed. For you know, here, it was weird, and. Um, and then she said to go to bed and then she went to bed and I slept on my floor and then I woke up at six in the morning she was uh, pissing very close to my head. <laughs> <laughs> and um, then, I, yeah, then, then I was just like, I didn't know what to do and then she, 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 uh, she just sort of went back to sleep and then I went back to sleep and, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, and... Uh, yeah, then we. She, she actually, I, I cooked her breakfast and drove her home. <laughs> Genuinely, I did that. And um, then we went on a second date and I shot on a carpet. Um, <laughs> I, I, did do, I didn't do that last bit. But, um, but yeah, that's probably the most. That, that yeah. was a real bit where I was like, this is horrific. Again, it's another story where you're like, oh no, this is bad, but it's going to be stand up. <laughs> it's a great stand up routine. Because when I was dating, Tinder didn't exist. So the yeah. last time I was dating, and like I think MySpace and Facebook had just sort of come in just in my last year yeah. of wonderful freedom before yeah. I <laughs> finally fell in love. Uh, and so it must have really changed the, the yeah. dating scene. So like in a way, to only sleep with 40 people if you're a sexually active person is kind of it's not, insanely nothing. It's like, it's not. That's the mad thing. Yeah. And it's... Um, it's changed everything, but it's also like obviously for the better and obviously for the worse. Like there's so many diff nobody like like values anything anymore. So you know where you would like go talk to someone across a bar and take get the confidence up to go and speak to them and be like, oh my god, and that tension and excitement that's gone now because like if you kind of you don't have to do that anymore. You just have to do that with your thumb and that's fine. And uh, and now you know 
you would be like, oh, their eyebrows are weird, but I love them so much. It's amazing because it's, I'm probably not going to meet another woman ever again. <laughs> Whereas now they're just like, well, I'll, I don't like their eyebrows. I'll get a better eyebrow one tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so it's sort of like Groundhog Day. Yeah, it is. So like, yeah. <laughs> and I feel like people do get stuck in that thing. And, and um, yeah, so it's not, it's not, but it's you not do, great. But it's still, I think it's still what nearly for everyone that kind of lifestyle eventually wears yes. you down. I mean, sometimes it wears you down for a bit and you go back to being monogamous yeah. and then that wears you down for a bit and you go back to being a slag again. But yeah. eventually, <laughs> <laughs> eventually you, you know, eventually you sort of hit a, a point of realisation that it's... Yeah, it's not, it's like, yeah, no, but I mean, what you realise, isn't it, Richard? Nobody's happy. <laughs> um, no, so it's like, yeah, so everyone's just kind of, yeah, no, no, for, the grass is, it's, it's like, it's always greeter for those two people because like, they're like, whoa, and then the people who are in relationships are like, oh, no, I wish I had Tinder back in my day. And, and not you, but like the... I, um, no, I do. You know, but people... <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but like, it's But I also think, we know, I think in my, you know, I was, I wasted so much time. I was alone so much of the time. Yeah. Uh, in my 20s, you know, I was alone all the time because I was working and then I was too shy to talk, yeah. you know, to, to chat to people. If there'd been like a way of talking to people online, I, that would have been okay. You know, it would have just been nice for the company well, as much as anything. It's good for stand-ups because yeah. I think stand-ups aren't, like, I think in that same way, I'm, you know, people assume that you're an outward person and that you're really confident and that you would go up to someone in a bar and be like, hey, what's going on with your life? And, um, or something from yeah. not the 1920s. <laughs> and, um, and uh, but like, I... It's I, when we're not like those people, and no. that's why we're stand-up comedians. It's because we're awkward, weird people. Whereas those dating apps actually kind of gives you, it gives you a level playing field from because the, the people who did well it used to fucking annoy me so much. The people who would like get the women that you were like you was really interested in were the people that were the fucking dickheads. The dickheads that were the ones who just go over and be like, "Hey, what's up?" <laughs> and um, and I was like, "Fucking on. I'm a nice seems, man." Seems, seems like you could have done that, but you are great at it. The two yeah. two times you've gone, "Hey, what's going on in your world?" I don't know why I, I want to have sex with you now. So <laughs> we can have sex. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's um, but yeah, it's uh, and but with comedians, we it's, it was nice because you can write something funny. Yeah, yeah. and then. But you also, you know, I really what I did a, I did a show where I, d I dated fifty women in fifty days. So I sort of did Tinder mm. before Tinder, and it was just like going out with people who were friends of friends. But it actually go, oh, actually, this is a great way to. This is a better way of doing it because, yeah. right, you know, you're meeting lots of people, and then eventually you will go, oh, hold on, you know, I found someone, or you yeah, know, it's 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 the looking really seriously or like waiting for the right person to come along or sitting waiting for in your own house waiting for somehow for yeah. love to arrive you know if you get out there and just have fun and meet people and that and doesn't mean you have to you... have sex with everyone but it just is yeah. you just go out and meet people you will find someone that you that you like and, and you learn stuff about yourself yeah to, sorry to get deep on it but uh, i think the more big dates you go on and the more sort of if you have sex with more people then you kind of, not in a bad way but you kind of that you kind of if you you kind of realize what you want and what you don't want and then you sort of you sort of cross it off the list you go like that's not <laughs> something i want I, that, I want that in them but not that and you don't want to be too picky but then i met my person i'm getting married to and i was like that is that is, that is everything i wanted to put that is all of the best things of anyone i've ever met with none of the bad sex yeah. and like well i love her she's the best <laughs> just you wait uh, so <laughs> it's just, just right. Just do that. That's right. So yeah. it, it just gets better every day. That's what. That's what you're gonna find. Just it's better every day. <laughs> no, it's good. I would. I wouldn't. Wouldn't go. Even, I wouldn't. Even, my, even if Katie died, I wouldn't go back. <laughs> You'd you try and suck your own cock again, though, would you? I would. No that chance. No chance now. Yeah, it was horrible as what I said. Luckily, <laughs> luckily, my wife, she doesn't really have a sense of humour about stuff like this. It makes, it makes me keep on saying it more. <laughs> it's good. I'm, such, I'm just a, a lovely person at home, so it's fine. Uh, it's fine. <laughs> oh, bless you. Let's cut this out. Let's cut this bit out. Uh, so it's... <laughs> <laughs> um, well, look, hey, you... you um, 
You're gonna are you touring? You're in the Netflix comedians of the world. Yes. Which must is that made a big difference to things? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, it's, uh, well, it's it made a big difference in the, so there's the Netflix half hour specials which were put all over the world, and um, and so it was me and three other comedians from the UK did it, and uh, and Nish was one of the other ones, and um, and it's been great. It's really it's kind of made a difference here, but it's also made. <laughs> Uh, it's ma I mean, it's made a difference in the way that people from Brazil go, when are you coming to Brazil? And I'm like, never. Uh, and, um, but it's, uh, that's kind of the main difference, really. But again, it's like we talked about, it's that thing, like you do projects like that, which kind of hopefully gives you the sort of, the, you can walk that path well in terms of then you can, those celeb things that yeah. you, you do, like I'm a celeb kind of balances it out and you go, I've got... Half an hour of comedy of Netflix that hopefully is of a caliber. But because it's everywhere, like. you can you know you can go to America now and and sell tickets in America. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's. I uh, mean, if you do, are you doing? Have you have you been to America before? Yeah, I'm going to go there soon, and I'm going to do a little bit of it. It's not. Yeah. I I love the comedy circuit here, and I love I I just love it here. I think it's so, like, it's just such a wonderful petri dish of brilliant talent, and Edinburgh is like such an amazing thing that the rest of the world doesn't have. The other circuits all around, they just don't have that. And it's so, it makes everyone so creative that we, that, that it's just, it's so great for us. And, um, and so I love it here. I just love it here. And I, so I don't want to go and make, go to make it big in this. I've just not, I've not no. got any interest in that really. No, I never had an interest and luckily they, <laughs> there was no interest, but you know, it was a mutual lack of interest. <laughs> but, uh, but no, you know, I, well, I thought let's crack the UK first. Yes. <laughs> you know, and I'm, you've got to keep trying. You've got to keep going. You've got to keep, <laughs> got to keep, going. Got to keep hustling. See how <laughs> it goes. Um, well, there was loads more to talk to you about. We could talk a little. Are you all right after that piece of set fell on your head? In, oh, yeah. Yeah. No, look at the scar. It's like mental. Oh my God. It's like proper big. Yeah. Um, I was doing a, a TV show in, in Australia, uh, the after show of Amsterdam, and um, it was just a windy day. And um, luckily I was sat down, otherwise I would have fallen over with my small feet. But... Um, <laughs> The, um, the, the, just a bit of set that had been there for three years. It just blew over and smashed me in the head. And I just, it was the look on the crew. Everyone was like, oh, like everyone was looking at me. And I was like, oh, I think I'm okay. And then I felt the blood coming down the oh side my of my God. head and my neck. And I was like, I'm going to die now. <laughs> and this is the way I'm going to die. And um, I, I genuinely, I, I think it's one of the only times in my life where I was like, I thought I was going to die. And, I, and it was also, it wasn't just me and everyone else was like, you're going to be okay. Everyone else around me were like, oh, I think this guy's going to die. <laughs> <laughs> I think this guy's going to die. He's going to die in front of us. And, um, and, uh, and then I got, went, to, went to the doctors and it was kind of okay. And then, and then they sewed it up and then I went on live television the next day. Did you? Any, any effects afterwards? Any, like, superpowers? Uh, or yeah. It's... Now you can be, you've got the powers of a piece of set. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, yeah, I have, an, I have an incredible talent to uh, host live television with a slight concussion. Um, no, it's, uh, yeah, so that was amazing because, like, all of the, I mean, ITV shat themselves. <laughs> and, um, but everyone was very nice, they were very nice to me. And so it was, yeah, so it all worked out all right. You didn't see if you sued them? No. For, damp for emotional no, damages? I think, I think it's, you know, just like hopefully they'll keep me going on the channel. Yeah. Well, that could be your bargaining chip exactly. now. Exactly. I'll okay. sue him when I stop working. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just threaten, just threaten, threaten to do so. Um, cool. And so you're going to be touring the UK as well this year? Next year, next, next year. Because I toured all of last year. And so, yeah, I'm going to go um, start next year on another tour. And, um, uh, yeah, I'm, like, writing it now. I'm going to go to Edinburgh, just do, like, a work in progress for two weeks. Cool. And... Um, and just sort of work that up, and um, yeah, I'm really, I just, I'm really having fun writing a new show. It's really fun. Good. Well, I look forward to. I'll come and see you in Edinburgh because I'm going to be up there do. doing, doing this stupid show as well. So oh, I'd love to. Let's all get, love to let's see let's you. Let's hang, let's, let's, let's hang out. Let's hang out and make up for the last eleven years. Yeah, let's see how that that's, goes. You know, that's that's really try. <laughs> that's our best. what this is. I just meet people for an hour, and again, that's enough, isn't it? It's friendship. That's <laughs> a, <laughs> yeah, that's enough. Yeah. If I like them a lot, they can come back a second time. Yeah. That's how it works. So uh, <laughs> this is my social <laughs> life. <laughs> <laughs> there's loads more to talk to you about. So you know, there's every chance. I haven't talked about Sienna Miller. We could talk oh. about. Oh, that's great stuff. We're not going to talk, about, gonna talk about that. We're not going to talk about that. We're going to hold that for, oh. for the second 
Are they all one? Uh, when, you went, when you went into the jungle, had Trump just been elected president or just he, made president? He'd just been, uh, he'd just been made president the night before I went in. Were you so, worried that uh, you were going to die in the jungle? In well, a nuclear war? Yeah, come on, kind of, because well, it was just a mad thing where it was like, a reality star had just become a president yeah. and now I was just about to go to a reality show yeah. and I was like, I'm going to become president. <laughs> so if, if anything, it made my, me have lofty ambitions. <laughs> <laughs> it's good that you saw it that way. Uh, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, please give a massive round of applause. Joe Dummy! <laughs> We're back next time. Les Dennis is on next week. Apple. <laughs> How do you like them sky potatoes? <laughs>